So some of you may have heard the question before, how do you eat an elephant? That's right, one bite at a time, but where do you start? We all know that healing is a marathon, not a sprint. We start when we take that first step. Good news, since you're still here, you've taken the first step. And some of you have been on the road running for quite a while and have come a good distance, but now maybe you feel stuck or maybe you want to put wheels on your recovery. Whatever the reason you're here, if you are ready to take it to the next level, stick with me. My name is Don Carter. I'm an integrative psychotherapist in long-term personal recovery from addiction and chronic depression. I'm also the author of the best-selling Flying the Iceberg series. I wrote that six-book series to pay forward the personal, professional, academic, and spiritual blessings that I've been given on this road to recovery. The growth of Serenity Cafe Academy and the magnitude of options for the courses there have become overwhelming to many people. This inspired me to join some of you on your journey by offering optional counseling and coaching services. Sometimes there's more than one elephant in the living room. Sometimes we need help to drive them out. Others may not need so much additional help, if any. You may already be in counseling or coaching. You may already have lots of experience in therapy and recovery, or maybe even a trained therapist or coach. Many of us are wounded healers. The following elephants are the targets for my Thawing the Iceberg series. These elephants are huge and sooner or later can no longer be ignored because they simply will not go away on their own. Depression and anxiety, addiction and codependency, complex PTSD and adult child syndrome, obsession and compulsion, trauma and attachment wounds, abandonment, shame, and contempt. My best teachers have been the thousands of clients that I've had the honor of working with over the years. The courses in my Serenity Cafe Academy are designed to help people heal from long-standing emotional wounds, often rooted in growing up in less than nurturing or outright dysfunctional families. The most obvious cases of emotional wounds come from emotional, sexual, or physical abuse. These are traumatic wounds that result from what someone did to you. Attachment wounds, which can be just as devastating to a child, come from what someone did not do for you. Children have these developmental dependency needs. They depend on their caretakers to meet these needs. When the needs go unmet, it causes pain. At birth, we have a primal need for connection because without it, we die. And we have a primal fear of abandonment because if abandoned, we die. The nervous system has built-in alarms that go off to signal when one of these needs arises. That's why the signal changes from a cry for help to a cry for rescue when the need goes unmet. In addition to the need for safety and protection, the following are the primary emotional dependency needs. Time. To a child, quality time equals love. Both parents need to spend quality time with each child. Quality is determined by meeting the following needs. Attention. This is a verb meaning to attend to the child, which implies that caretakers are tuned in to the needs of the child and help meet those needs. Proper attention equals worth or value. Affection, a warm, cozy, emotional climate with lots of hugs and kisses and pats on the back, words of encouragement, nurturing and safety. Affection equals approval. It tells a child you measure up. Direction, this is structure in the form of guidance and discipline. The best direction comes from proper role modeling and is backed up by constant and consistent limits and boundaries. When a child does not get their needs for safety and protection met because they're emotionally, physically, or sexually abused, they develop the emotional wound of abandonment, an emotional infection of shame, and that emotional scab of contempt for self, others, or life in general. Moderate to severe cases of abandonment, shame, and contempt for self or others 
can also come from situations in which the child does not fully or consistently get those emotional dependency needs met, such as when the child lives in a shame-based family system. In such families, the children get messages of disapproval through constant criticism, rather than messages of approval and warmth. A shame-based family system is characterized by the parent's use of shame to provide direction. Emotional wounds of abandonment, shame, and contempt create a poor beliefs about not being good enough. For instance, if I don't get enough quality time, then I'm not lovable enough. Not enough attention? I'm not worthy of it. Not enough affection? I'm just not enough. I don't measure up. Not enough direction? I'm not competent anyway, I'll just make a mistake so they're not going to waste their time trying to teach me anything. I'm not good enough. Once core beliefs are established and accepted, the child then lives as if they are true. These beliefs about self, others, and the world in general become our mental filters that collect evidence that they are true, and they delete evidence to the contrary. These emotional wounds of abandonment, infection of shame, and scab of contempt create a free-floating mass of pain that I call the false self, just beneath the surface of awareness. It feels like who I am because the pain is emotional in nature. We learn to cover up our private image, that false self, with a public image, or invented self, to avoid more abandonment, shame, and contempt from others. Thus, we abandon our inner world of self by putting on a mask or cover-up. I believe this is where what has been called the imposter syndrome comes from. Since we cannot or do not go inside, we cannot generate comfort and relief from the inside. We cannot expose who we really feel like we are to ourselves or others. We must look to something in our outer world for comfort and relief. In the meantime, we need to put on a face that says, I'm normal, I fit in, because of the fear of abandonment and rejection. So in order to find comfort and relief somewhere outside of us, this is where the addictions and compulsions at the tip of the iceberg come from. When wounded people wound people. When parents do not meet the needs of their children, it's not usually because they don't love them. I say usually because there are those cases that one cannot understand, accept, explain, or excuse for any reason. But I believe most parents do the best they can to take care of their children, given the internal and external resources they possess. I cannot count the times where I've heard a parent say, I try hard to make sure my kids have it better than I did. This speaks very loudly to me. It says that these parents are familiar with unmet dependency needs and they want better for their kids. But they were raised by their parents, who were raised by their parents, and so on. They cannot give much more than they've been given, even though many of them do find a way to do somewhat better for their own children. So I'm not here to throw parents under the bus. On the contrary, my clients have been children, teenagers, soon to be parents, parents and grandparents. I get it. Wounded people wound people. The intergenerational transfer of abandonment, shame, and contempt, which was outlined by John Bradshaw when he said, 90% of our shame does not even belong to us. It was passed on from our parents, who got it from their parents, and so on. I'm here to add abandonment and contempt to that statement. Again, rather than passing blame to our ancestors, my mission is to help you to stop that intergenerational transfer of abandonment, shame, and contempt. How? I'm glad you asked. That's what my Thawing the Iceberg series is all about. With intensity and repetition, using the laws of neuroscience, appropriate information, and the right therapeutic approaches, we can change our faulty mental filters, heal our emotional wounds, and become who we were really intended to be, our true self, with purpose, meaning, and fulfillment in our lives. I know this to be true because I've been there and done that myself. What are the benefits of doing this Thawing the Iceberg program? For starters, here's one of the most frequently asked questions in counseling offices everywhere. But why dig all that up again? The answer, because it keeps getting triggered anyway. 
Below are just a few more of the many benefits of healing these emotional wounds.